Dave Kistler is the president of Hope Ministries International, an outreach to many nations around the world and to many cities here in the United States to bring the good news of the gospel. Dave surrendered to preach at age 16 and following his college and seminary training served in a youth ministry in Florida. He travels the United States holding evangelistic services and as a result of opening opportunities in the, in the, in the D.C. area, Dave also started the Hope to the Hill initiative uh, which is an ongoing ministry to of help and encouragement to elected officials and national leaders in D.C. Recently, Dave was elected president of the North Carolina Pastors Network, a newly formed entity that seeks to motivate and mobilize pastors to speak clearly, boldly, and biblically on the issues affecting our nation. Dave, thanks for being with us today on the Conservative Commander Radio Show. Well, Sam, thank you so much. It's a delight to be with you. Well, Dave, you know we have a lot to talk about here today, and uh, I've positioned this, uh, this, this program, uh, kind of entitled it, um, Unveiling Islam, What Every American Christian or not, Every American Citizen uh, Ought to Know. Uh, Dave, just as a little bit of a, a setup here, when we get into the first question, on this program we've had a number of guests. we spent a lot of time talking about the influence of Islam around the world. Uh, we've, we've looked deep into the issue of the Muslim Brotherhood, around the world, its relationship to al-Qaeda, Hezbollah, and so forth. And we've talked on this program about the penetration of the Muslim Brotherhood into the Obama administration and their impact on media. Now, we've, we've talked about it from the standpoint of, of, of them being the driving force behind wanting to destroy America and Israel. They've made it clear collectively, these groups. But today, I'd like to focus on this issue of, of Islam and what we should know as concerned patriotic Americans. Now, you just held a, a, a conference in North Carolina entitled mm -hmm. Unveiling Islam. So there are things that you believe that we must know, mm -hmm. but that we're not being told by the controlled media. So my first question to you, Dave Kistler, president of the North Carolina Pastors Network, is this. Is Islam in America something that should be of a concern to patriotic and Christian Americans? And if so, what is it primarily that should be of concern? Well, Sam, absolutely it's something that uh, should be of concern. In fact, let, let me word it this way, if I could, and I'm not trying to be silly, but I just want to give a simple illustration. If uh, the people that had perpetrated acts of terror against us on 9-11, if uh, the, the folks that had perpetrated acts of terror against us uh, in, in the attempted Times Square bombing, the Christmas Day bombing, uh, the bombing of the USS Cole, which was uh, an American interest, an American warship. If all of these that I've mentioned and other examples of attacks against us had been perpetrated against us by left-handed German women instead of Muslims, um, left-handed German women. Every time that an act of terror came against us, it was perpetrated by a left-handed German woman. Would we not be foolish to ignore left-handed German women and say, you know what, we're going to profile or we're going to look into the backgrounds of right-handed Russian men or some other nationality? Of course, that would be folly. So, so Sam, what's happened is a threat has been uh, perpetrated against the United States for a long time coming from those who adhere to the radical Islamic ideology, and America is the target. So uh, we are being more than foolish to ignore the fact that we have an enemy out there that is seeking the destruction of the downfall of the United States of America and attempt to turn it into a, uh, an Islamic state at some point, and so we can no longer ignore it. In fact, we've waited too long, really, now already, because of the infiltration into the Obama administration, into various aspects of our government, the State Department, and so on. So it must be, it must be an issue of concern uh, for every American who values their freedom, specifically their religious freedom. Okay, Dave, so you basically, you're just saying, just as a basic premise, just as a starting point, we know from the actions, from the repeated incidences against America, both here on, in our country and around the world, and the repeated threats, that between those two, you'd have to be absolutely foolish or complicit not to stand up and say, wait a minute here, what are we doing? So, that's, so you're just saying, let's start on a basis of fact and observation. Now let's go here next. 
there, there are many illustrations where Islam influences are showing up in education, in law, and history revisionism. Uh, it appears that where the proponents of Islam are present, that there is also a clear and direct attack against Judaism and Christianity, with a clear effort, in my opinion, to portray Islam and jihad as peaceful, loving, fair to women, and that kind of thing. One, one case down in, in Florida uh, is showing up right now. There's a big debate going down there about world history textbooks, for instance, now be, uh, are a clear issue because in them they are positioning Islam in the most favorable of circumstances, kind of redefining the terms of jihad, but, but, but a clear excising of any, any con- connection to Christianity uh, or uh, Judaism. Now, how is this happening and how prevalent, uh, Dave Kistler, do you think that this is? Is it just down there in Florida, or is this something that everybody who's listening across this country ought to be aware of? Well, well Sam, it's not just in Florida uh, alone. It, uh, it's all across the nation. About three years ago, I was, um, was speaking with a gentleman who's taught within the public school system in North Carolina for, for decades, and he was talking about how the, uh, the textbooks uh, go on 10-year cycles, and it was about time for the history text to be rewritten. And in the, the history text consideration for the next 10 years, there was an attempt, thankfully the, temp, the attempt was unsuccessful because people found out about what was going on, an attempt to eliminate from every U.S. history text the, um, the, 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 the section of U.S. history from basically 1775 all the way to, to past Reconstruction, past the Civil War and Reconstruction. They were going to eliminate that part of U.S. history and no longer teach it. Well, of course, uh, that was not successful. Um, American history is going to be taught you know, in its entirety for at least the next number of years, probably seven more years, and then we'll face the dilemma again. But what has happened simultaneous with that, Sam, within the history texts, uh, is an attempt to promote Islam. The, the, the situation you cited in Florida, there's an entire chapter included in the history text, some 36 pages worth of information on who Muhammad was, how Islam is a religion of peace, how jihad is not a violent thing, it's a very peaceful thing, the entire religion of Islam is a peaceful religion, and nothing given whatsoever to Christianity. Uh, that's just in Florida, and that's just in the situation with the history text. However, Sam, what has happened in our federal government is we've had an infiltration of Islamic elements into the, the federal government, into the U.S. State Department, and with this current administration, many of the advisors, Sam, that are advising those in the White House are coming from an is- Islamic persuasion and an Islamic mindset. So, in essence, we've had a Trojan horse enter the United States under the guise of peace, under this uh, complete misunderstanding of, uh, of, of, of freedom of religion and uh, you know, an ability on the part of a quote-unquote religion, which is also a, an ideology, a political ideology, that it can have free course in our country and it can speak and talk, and yet their designs, Gary, uh, excuse me, Sam, are for the destruction of the United States of America. So it's permeated the entire makeup of our country, and it's nothing less than a Trojan horse. Well, I think this is a, I think this is a very very critical thing, obviously, and I know the textbooks in Florida. Uh, part of the reason that I believe that's going on down there is just because that Florida happens to be the second largest producer of textbooks, and if they can get them in in, in the Texas, basically you get them all. Across, I mean, in in Florida, then you get them all around the country. That's and so, Tex- so this Texas so this is, is happening, as you say, across yeah. the country, and it's of major concern not just down there, but also right here in Pennsylvania. We have to take a break here in just a minute. Um, uh, Dave, so if you can stay with us. But I do want to come back with this one question after the break. So I want you to think about it, and uh, I think it's a big issue. We have religious liberty that's based on the concept of Judeo-Christian belief that every man has a choice. We have no official government denomination, and that's permitted. And we've welcomed people here from around the globe and have said to them, come to America where you can worship as you wish. Yet in every country that I'm aware, where Islam rules, there is no such reciprocating open arms for Christians or Jews, as an example. In fact, it's just the opposite. So my question, can Islam and Christianity, or shall I say the U.S. Constitution and Sharia law, exist 
together or are they mutually exclusive? So go wherever you need to go on that, but I think that's an issue that a lot of people fundamentally want to know the answer to. Yes, Sam. In fact, the terminology you used, I'd love to delve into. We don't have time to do it now, but there is no official denomination in the United States of America, and I think that's what our founding fathers meant by the First Amendment when they used the term religion. However, let me just get to the answer, um, to answer your question. No, Islam, Sharia law, which is Islamic law, and the Constitution are completely mutually exclusive concepts. It is absolutely impossible for Islam to function in the United States and uh, and it work. That's why just uh, last month, September 25th, it came to light just a couple of days ago that uh, Muslims in Detroit, Michigan, which currently houses the largest segment of Muslims in the United States, they had been meeting, in fact, held their last meeting on September 25th to discuss ways to facilitate the implementation of Sharia courts in the greater Detroit area. Sam, this is the way Sharia law, this is the way Muslims have operated around the world. Just look at Europe as our model. They don't go into a host country and take part. They go in and attempt to take over. And that's why you have in the the large Muslim communities of Great Britain, uh, you have Sharia law being the law of the land rather than British law, and the same thing is being attempted here in the United States. That has led uh, the state of Arizona, Kansas, Tennessee, Louisiana, South Dakota, and Oklahoma, and most recently my home state of North Carolina to pass legislation prohibiting the use of any foreign law in our state courts. And uh, the attempt uh, to prohibit that is, of course, specifically directed at uh, Islam and keeping Sharia law out because it is completely incompatible with the U.S. Constitution. Uh, D- Dave, I, th- I had somebody on here on this program some time ago, and we talked about the fact that uh, already Sharia law, uh, I think the last number that I've seen, it may be up from now, uh, were that there were 50 cases, I believe, of uh, judicial rulings across the country, various levels of courts, that that at least in one part officially of the judicial ruling, Sharia was was uh, was referenced. So it's already finding its way in at some point. Their their effort in in Detroit is to is to set up a, an entirely uh, separate court system. So so from the standpoint of Islam towards our Constitution, it cannot exist. Can our Constitution entertain or exist with? Islam answer. I mean, so is the answer the same for both of them? Absolutely not. The, the answer is identical. No, our constitution cannot exist with Islam. And here's the reason, Sam. If Islam, if it were possible for Islam to operate with its religious beliefs only, then there might be a possibility of compatibility. But see, Islam is not just a religious system, it is also a political system. Mm -hmm. And in Islam, the religion and the political aspects uh, are totally inseparable. And so because of that, it is absolutely impossible for the U.S. Constitution and the United States to to accommodate anything remotely close to Sharia. Well, and so, so at the end of the day, our greatest threat here, the United States' greatest threat internally, is to a competing system of law, Sharia versus our Constitution. In simplest terms, that's what it is. It may be the religion, but ultimately it's the imposition of law that is the issue. That, that's what you're saying. That is exactly what I'm saying, Sam. And if I might reference this as an example, in 1993 there was a group of Muslim Brotherhood leaders and activists that met in the city of Philadelphia, the city that uh, this program is heard in, and uh, an organization called CARE, Council on American Islamic Relations, was formed out of that meeting to basically um, change the face of Islam in the United States of America. That is, try to put a, a peaceful face, a positive face, on uh, what Islam is and what the Muslim Brotherhood's goals are. And yet it was stated at that meeting that uh, the Muslim Brotherhood's goal is to, and I quote, destroy Western civilization from within and replace it with Islamic rule, end quote. So um, understanding that's, that's the, the basis of the Muslim Brotherhood and that's the basis of Islam, then there is absolutely no way that the, the two, the Constitution and Islam, are in any way compatible. Okay, Dave, let's take it to the next step here then. 
contrast with me, if you could, in, in simple terms. We have a constitution that has embodied within it the principles of religious liberty, uh, the, 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 the aspect before the law that we are innocent before unless proven guilty. We have the ability for freedom of conscience. Okay, that is under our Constitution, which is biblically Judeo-based. Now, under Sharia, are, do, would any of those, would any of those things be able to exist under Sharia law? Well, Sam, the answer to that is no. The answer to that is no. I just returned last summer from spending ten days in a in a heavily Muslim country uh, on the African continent. And Sam, if someone steals. If someone steals a piece of fruit from a roadside market in the country where I was, here is the way they're dealt with. There is no trial. There is no appearance before a judge. Um, Sharia law is enacted against that individual on the spot. And I'll not go into a description of what actually happened there in that country, but uh, a man was stoned to death for committing a crime, and there was no trial. There was no appearance before a judge. There was none of those things that are embodied and embedded in uh, our religious, or excuse me, our legal system coming from our Constitution based on a Judeo-Christian ethic. None of those things are existent in, uh, in Sharia law, so it's, it's completely incompatible. So personal rights don't really exist under that kind of a framework. Uh, in those textbooks in Florida, they were making a big deal about talking about how friendly and favorable to women, as an example, Islam is. Is that true? It is not true, Sam, and I would encourage our listeners to try to locate a video. It's a, it's a movie based on a true story, kind of a documentary-type video called The Stoning of Soraya M. tells the story of a uh, of a young married woman in Afghanistan who was stoned to death uh, based on a manufactured case of adultery on the part of her husband against her because her husband wanted to marry a 14-year-old. That's Sharia. That's Sharia. And in Sharia, women do not have the rights that that textbook in Florida is claiming they have. Women are not treated uh, in a positive way. Uh, all of that, Sam, is falsehood. See, that's, a, that's an incredible thing that, uh, that, that so many women in this country appear to not to even to know that that is an incredible thing. Uh, Dave, we have just about one minute left. Uh, I want you to be able to tell people where to go, actually about less than one minute. But what, can, what should concerned Americans do, if anything, very, very quickly, and where can they go to find out more about you if, if you have a place for them to go? Well, we have a website called HopeMinistriesOnline.com, HopeMinistriesOnline.com. Also, our newly formed North Carolina Pastors Network website is ncpastors.net, ncpastors.net. And to, to know how to get engaged and find more uh, about what's happening with Islam and play a role, an active role in preventing its advance in America, I would encourage our listeners to go to Act for America. That's Brigitte Gabriel's organization. She does a great job, actforamerica.org, and you can find out uh, appropriate information there. Okay, very good. Well, Dave Kistler, President of Hope Ministries International and the North Carolina Pastors Network, thank you for being with us today on this very, very critical issue. Uh, we look forward to having you back with us sometime here in the future. Sam, thank you so much. Keep up the great work.